Hey everybody. This is Jen Raza and I am joining you guys today to celebrate one of our newest Build-A-Flower stamp sets, the lovely Build-A-Flower Coneflower. Um, what's kind of funny is that we always have a new release of a Build-A-Flower on the first and I don't know why, but even though I knew today was the Coneflower release, I wasn't quite putting it together that today is April 1st, which is April Fool's Day. So I did kind of uh, land myself in a few pranks that people did as little um, April Fool's Day jokes. And I'm wondering if any of you out there have also been victim to an April Fool's prank today. But like I said, I wasn't even thinking about it, even though I know that Build a Flower Day is always the first of the month. So I don't know, that just kind of popped into my head. And I'm curious if that's just like a kid's thing or maybe your kids played pranks on you or you played pranks on your children or vice versa. But I don't know, it just kind of popped into my mind today, even though, um, like I said, I should have known earlier because it is Build a Flower Day. So of course it is the first of the month. So happy April to everybody out there. If you share this video while we're live, then you will be entered in for a chance to win a $15 gift certificate to the Alta New Store, which of course you can put towards the purchase of the Build a Flower Cone Flower or anything else that may be on your crafty wish list. So hello to some of the people I'm already seeing popping in, um, like Cece and Stacy and Martina and Bobby and all the others that I may have missed. So thanks again for joining in and for sharing. So if you're new to the Build a Flower, I'll give you a quick spiel because I see a lot of familiar names. So I know many of you are already familiar with this stamp category that we have, and it's actually a stamp and die category. So the Build a Flower was put together because we wanted to, first of all, have a monthly release of a special specific flower. So our Build a Flowers are always based on a specific flower, whereas other sets can sometimes be like a more whimsical, artistic, like expression of flowers. You know, we love flowers here at Alta New, so we kind of put flowers on everything. But the Build of Flowers is a special monthly specific flower, and it also has a coordinating die set. So because it has the stamp set and the coordinating die, coordinating die sold together as a bundle, it's a nice quick add for you to hop, pop into your cart without having to worry about searching around for the complementing products. So stamp and die in one go, but also we have a subscription. So you can save some money if you do the subscription. So we've got that linked up in the comments below. So make sure you check that out if you're interested. All right, so enough with that. Let's take a look at this lovely stamp set and you'll get a better look at it once I pop you down. I'm always moving things backwards. I still can't get used to seeing Things move right when I move them left and vice versa. But you can see that this is a large six by eight stamp set. Okay, and we've got a lot of sentiments and images on here. And we do have, like I mentioned, the coordinating die. So I think this is good a time as any to pop you down so we can get a closer look and then we'll get this one stamped out. So give me a moment just while I swap you over. Gwen, thank you so much for sharing with your crafty friends. That's fabulous. All right, so now that we've got this guy here, let's pull it out of the package. And one thing that I did do beforehand is I did condition my stamps, especially since we have some solid guys here, you're definitely gonna wanna do some stamp conditioning. And I just used our stamp conditioning eraser, but you can also go ahead and use um, any other eraser that you have that doesn't really shed, you don't want to get all those little particles or eraser bits on your set. Or you can also condition them by using a watermark stamp pad, kind of like our embossing ink or any other method that you prefer for conditioning. But I do really recommend conditioning your stamps so that you have the best possible impression when they are straight new out of the package. And you'll only have to do that the first time that you use these sets. So let me just kind of run you through some of these lovely sentiments, because I think this is just a really beautiful combination of fonts that we've got on this one. So tucked away here, hopefully you don't miss it, is love you. We have your kindness warms my heart. 
grateful for your friendship, grateful for you, sending hugs. Hello, friend. Thank you for all you do. I adore you. And down here, we appreciate you. And Kimberly is part of our subscription. And she said this is her third since joining the BAF subscription. So Kimberly, I'm so happy that this one is coming your way. And I hope you enjoy stamping it and using it. Now, the other thing I want to point out before we dive into the lovely insert is we do have the coordinating alphabet and number system here. So this is going to help you while you are doing your stamp layering. So if you're unsure of which flower or which layer of the flower gets stamped where and what position, the layering guide that I'll show you in a moment will definitely help you out along with these. So we don't add these on every single layering set, but usually the ones where it's not obvious or very clear where the layering will happen and how you're going to layer them up. Them up. So this is just gonna help you out. And you'll see down here, we also have the same letter and number system. Okay, let me open up our trifold, which by the way, if you've re noticed recently, we've got these new trifold. I'm not sure if any of the other gals have pointed this out. I'm sure maybe one of them did on one of the lives, but we don't have the layering guide on the back anymore. Instead, we have a preview on the back of the sample cards that you'll be receiving along with the images of anything that's coordinating. So of course, this one has the coordinating die set, which will come with your order of the build a flower. But if there was another stamp set that maybe had a coordinating stencil or a coordinating embossing folder, all those products would be listed here. We also have the description, which I'm so happy that we finally thought to put the description on the packaging. I think it's inspiring when you're creating to kind of know what was in our minds when we designed these stamp sets. So you'll get some more information on that and what the features are. We do have our QR code also on the back, which will link you directly to the shop listing. And of course our cute little barcode envelope. Um, Dawn is asking about the subscription. There is a link if you scroll up in the comments. Um, you can definitely check that out. Or if you go to our website at the top menu bar, there is an area for sub subscriptions and that can bring you to our Build a Flower, Paint a Flower, Mini Delight, as well as our Craft a Flower, which are our four monthly subscriptions, <laughs> I can't even say the word, subscription services that we have. And I'm gonna hint to you, there is another one coming. <gasps> this may be the first that anyone's heard of it publicly, but um, we are working hard behind the scenes. I'm hoping that we have our release coming out in the summer of our newest Build a Flower subscription. So, you know, when you go to, come to Facebook Live, sometimes you get little sneak peeks and information about things that are coming. So definitely keep that on your radar. There will be another subscription coming out. All right, we have some sample cards. So this is a really great way for you to see what this will look like all stamped out. It is beautiful. The cone flower is drawn in such a whimsical style and the layers are kind of stippled. Maybe it's a little hard to see on camera. Maybe this one was a little bit better. Okay, so you could see we've got some of the stippled details here. And it's just really a lovely set with simple, pretty shading. On the back side of this are our other two samples, just for more layout ideas, especially if you're stumped. And I am a gal who's all for the clean and simple card. So take a look at this one. There is not much there. If you're one of those girls who likes embellishments, this card is probably not gonna be one you recreate. I am all for it, but you can always start with a layout like this or an arrangement like this and then add to it. So go ahead and emboss that background with a 3D embossing folder, add ribbon, add embellishments, gemstones, whatever. But these are a great jumping off point no matter what your card making style is. And then we just have the inks that were used. Also good for selecting colors if you're unsure of what's gonna go with what. And now here's the most important part that I will be even using myself as I stamp these out is the layering guide. Um, the layering guide, as many of you probably know, is just kind of a step-by-step -step of how this is going to come together. 
Sharon has cone flowers in her backyard and the butterflies love them. Oh, that's so lovely to hear. So Sharon, I'm not sure where you're from, but hopefully you're in an area that is in the springtime season right now, because I have a feeling right now all the flowers are starting to emerge and those butterflies might be coming out as well. So I am thankful for it. I talk about it all the time because I live by the weather. I'm thrilled and happy when it's warm and I'm a little miserable when it's cold. And I hate to admit that the weather plays such a big part in how I feel about a day, but it does. Also, any day I'm crafting is a good day. So on those dreary days, you know, it's nice to just hop in the craft room. All right, I'm just going to be using my mini, mis mini Misty to help with my stamp positioning, but this one's not too bad when it comes to layering it. It's pretty straightforward. You could definitely tackle this with a block, like a regular acrylic block like this. But, you know, since I'm live, I like having the extra security of having a stamp positioner here with me. So Sue is from New Jersey. Okay, yeah, so you're definitely in spring. My in-laws live in New Jersey. I'm hoping we can get down to see them at some point because of course our plans to travel over the summer were foiled by COVID and the pandemic. So we are planning to go down to the Jersey shore this um, July. So I'm really hoping that <laughs> nothing happens to derail that. I've got my vaccine. I've My husband's got his, my in-laws have theirs. I can't imagine anything happening that would change our chances of going down. But you know, I just don't wanna jinx it, so. All right, hi, Carmen from Toronto. Nice to have you join us. If anyone else is just popping in, this is our Build a Flower Cone Flower, which is released today. If you're wondering why I'm stamping in this position, I am gonna be die cutting these, so I'm not really worried about where they're placed. I just wanna make sure I have some space between the two flowers so that I can definitely cut those out without them overlapping. For my first layer here, I'm just gonna go in good old jet black. Um, although obsidian is my favorite black ink that we have, um, it does take an extra few moments to dry and I don't want us to sit here and wait for ink to dry. So we're gonna go here with jet black. It is a fantastic dye ink and our Obsidian is pigment. We also have permanent black, which is another great ink, especially if you're gonna do watercoloring or any other coloring mediums where you don't want things to bleed. So, all right, so let's see how our lovely cone flowers are looking. So cute, cute as ever. Um, I'm realizing I did not wash off my little chamois here beforehand. So do I have a baby wipe? If not, I'm just going to be leaving stamps dirty today because I certainly don't want you to have to wait for me to um, <laughs> go get my stamp chamois wet. Yeah, um, I'm not seeing any baby wipes. So we're going with uh, messy stamping today. I'm going to be real inky by the end of this with nothing to clean off with. That's all right. It happens. Okay, so thank you Blooming Creativities for sharing the live. I love your name. So you are also entered to win a chance for a $15 gift certificate to the Alta New Store. Now I'm thinking of what kind of color I wanna go with. I'm gonna go with like these blues. I'm gonna go with sea breeze, turquoise, tide blue. Starlight, I think that would be really kind of cool for these cone flowers. And then for the centers, I'm gonna go with some orange tones. So orange and blue are opposite each other on the color wheel. So a little color theory for you here. Um, since they're opposite, they are complementing or complementary colors and they're going to provide a lot of contrast. So I think these centers and petals are gonna pop nicely from one another if I'm using these color tones. So just planning my inks on the fly here, as I always do. I'm very tempted to grab the tropical forest for my greens, but I'm going to resist my usuals and I'm gonna go with our old standby. The first set of green inks that we released, these were part of our 
first ink release ever, Frayed Leaf, Forest Glades, and Evergreen. I was having a conversation with Tazneem, who is the other co-founder. So she and I started Altenew together seven years ago, by the way. So April is her anniversary month, seven years. And I was chatting with her about our favorite ink colors. And she says, these greens are still her favorites. We've released many other greens since, but these this first set is her favorite set of inks. But you know, I do really, really love my parrot, my moss, and bamboo. <laughs> I can't get away from those other ones. All right, so now if you're looking here on our layering guide, I'll start off by layering this one at the bottom. So this is the DEF layer, and D1 is going to fill in the petals. D2 is going to give a little bit of shading. D3 is going to give us those stippled details. Ruth's also saying my favorite greens. So I don't know if she means Tasneem's favorites are her favorites. I think that's what she means is these. Um, or my favorites, the Tropical Forest set. But I think she means these. All right. And then um, I'll do the two layers for the center of the coneflower. Yeah, Gwen says that long, really. I know it's so funny because if you guys were around when Altenew started, it might not feel like it's been that long. I don't know. Just... Our first few like birth years, <laughs> birthday, I don't want to call it birthdays. We weren't born, but you know what I mean? The first few anniversaries that our company had, I feel like I was, um, the first few years, I feel like we had, I don't know, pretty good accomplishments with the first few years. Like we didn't have inks in the beginning. We just had stamps. We didn't have dyes. And then every year we started releasing some new things. And then around year four or five, I would say we didn't have as many new products. Now, if you check us out, we are going crazy with new categories, new products. We released embossing folders recently. We've been doing layering stencils for a while. So good things are coming. So I feel like seven is going to be a good year for us. Lots of new things. Again, a new subscription coming in, hopefully over the summer, if all of that works out. And I don't know, some really exciting stuff. So seven feels like a really good year for Altenew. All right, I'm going to skip Seabreeze, and I'm just going to go into Turquoise as my first layer. Camilla, the first stamp set we released, um, I think, I'm trying to think of how many were in that first release. We had a pretty big first release for a brand new company, but some of the standout products that you might remember from that release are the Painted Flowers, so that was a really lovely one. And we had layering flowers in our first release. And I don't think we really knew back then how big that was going to be, like what a hit. But it was really kind of fantastic that everyone loved the designs as much as we did. We really felt strongly that we had some great designs. And I'm happy that our customers also supported everything that we were doing. By the way, the next layer is Tide Blue. And if you saw before, I accidentally had grabbed the second layer. So now I'm ready for layer two. And I'm just going to be adding that in right here. So it's pretty easy to line up this large top two puddles here, kind of fit in with those puddles. So we're going to go right here with the second layer and pick it up. Um, we also had Superscript back in that first release, which I think was... I don't know. I, I can't say these were the first stamp sets that I saw like these, but it was one of the first like hand-drawn, cursive, large scale sets. And with the layered flowers that we released, like the painted flowers, that was the first of its kind that I had seen. And a lot of this is due to the fact that Tasneem and I were both stampers for so many years. And there were a lot of products that we really wanted that weren't out there on the market yet. So we just kind of had some brainstorming sessions and we were designing what we would like to see. So not knowing if the company would be a success or not, we just kind of dove right in doing the designs that we thought would just be pretty cool to have. So we wanted a layered flower set that looked like it was painted. We wanted a large hand drawn 
cursive stamp set with some sentiments that you can grab and easily put on a card or in a project and fill up a lot of space and just have like that unique artistic look. A lot of stamp companies at the time um, made some amazing sets, by the way. Like I was a stamper so for so many years because I loved the sets that other companies were coming out with. But I feel like a lot of them were more like precisely drawn. So you know, very like computer drawn, if you know what I mean, like someone took a lot of careful effort to really make everything precise and perfect. And Tazim and I both have more of like a loose artistic style that we gravitate towards. So a lot of our earlier sets especially had that kind of aesthetic. So yeah, these blues are awesome. Teresa just commented on the blues because as I'm just chatting away here, I'm getting this stamped out and blues are fantastic. So the third color I'm going in with is Starlight. And I'm going to be stamping this D3 layer, layer. So you can see right here. And I'm going to be looking at this center portion that's going to line up with this inner part of my cone flower, but also that top little petal right here that we've been lining up with the other one. So I'm going to put that into position, just kind of rock it around until it looks like it fits. And there we go. And this will be that starlight color. Um, a few of you asked how I met Tazneem. She was on a design team for a challenge blog that I ran that like way back in the day called the Runway Inspired Challenge. So I did that challenge because I loved participating in challenges, like weekly challenges. So there were a lot of blogs. I don't know if they're as popular now. I'm kind of out of the out of the game when it comes to you know doing challenges. So maybe some of you out there know some of the big challenges. I'm sure they're they are still out there. But I loved having a challenge because like I would get stumped all the time. I'd be so ready and like like excited about creating something. And then when it came time to actually stamp, you know, either I had a great idea and I just went with it or I was stumped and didn't know what to do. So challenge blogs really helped me get myself thinking outside of the box and really coming up with new ideas. So I am inspired by fashion and, you know, there are big fashion events every year in major cities and like New York Fashion Week and in Paris and Milan and even in London and like all these different areas. And if you watch these fashion shows, you can even just go online if you don't want to watch the live videos. And there are just pages and pages of gorgeous photographs of all these really cool um, outfits, dresses, clothing, menswear, women's wear, whatever all these different things. And what I always liked about following fashion trends is that they're always like ahead of the trends. So you're seeing stuff like a season early or two seasons early, whatever it happens to be. And I felt like that was a really cool way to, you know, keep on top of trends and keep things fresh in the craft room too. So the runway inspired challenge was exactly what you would expect. Um, we had a different photo every week from one of the like design neither major designers or even sometimes some of the smaller designers that maybe some people have never heard of and we'd have a photo and you would create a card inspired by that outfit okay and it could be anything about it, it could even be from the photography like some of the girls on the team would see the runway down the center with the girl in the middle or the guy in the middle wearing whatever they're wearing and like they would incorporate maybe that stripe on their card to represent the runway so some people did it just inspired by the clothes? Some did it inspired by even the makeup and the hair. There's just a lot of cool things. I wish I still had time to run that. But long story short, because now we're kind of getting off topic here. But Tazneem, she, um, by the way, I'm using Sunkissed for this first layer. Tazneem was a participant in the challenge. And then I had a design team call. And she just made the most amazing cards, again, with a simple, clean aesthetic but just so cool and well thought out. She really did some amazing things with paper and ink and I just really respected it. So I asked her to be on the team after, she, okay, I didn't really ask her, I guess she already wanted to cause she replied to the design team call. Um, but I was happy to put her on the team and that's how we met. And after having many conversations about, you know, how we like to draw, but we, you know, we also had some ideas for stamps and things that we didn't see out in the market. By the way, orange cream is coming up next. Um, 
because we had these ideas, we thought, well, maybe we'll just get some stamps made. So we kind of looked into what would it cost just to get them made, not to sell or anything, just we can make some stamps for ourselves. So, you know, that idea kind of blossomed into having um, an actual company. And we still hadn't met in person by that point, which is really funny that we started a company together and it wasn't until months, months later, I think it was like we started the company in April and then I think we met in December. So like <laughs> we're talking a long time before we met face to face, but we had had so many conversations online, so many phone calls and really I knew she was just a good person with a good heart and such a creative person. And I know she said that she's she felt the same way from about me and having known each other for quite some time online, we trusted each other completely to go ahead and do this. Sorry, I'm making such a mess here. Um, again, if you just recently are joining us, this is the Build a Flower Cone Flower and I forgot to prepare my um, stamp chamois and I don't have baby wipes within reach and I'm certainly not gonna look for them live while you guys are here. So everything's messy, inky. I'm just popping it on top so that I don't put it away completely before I have a chance to clean them off. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead in with the frayed leaf on this first layer of um, the leaves and I am thrilled with how my blues and oranges look together Exactly the effect I wanted. I wanted lots of high contrast. I wanted this to be vibrant I wanted it to pop and that's exactly what's happening And there is my first layer for my leaf and stem and then I'm just popping in the second layer over here if you want to consult this guide once more um and you can see right there, this is what I'm adding as the detail. I'm trying to check out the comments while I'm chatting and while I'm stamping. So I saw someone asked, Sharon said, did you go to Alt News first CHA? I might have seen you. I didn't go that first year. My first CHA was actually Alt News second CHA. So Tasneem had gone to that first one. So you probably met her if you've been to the other CHA, uh, which is now Creativation. Then you've seen me at all the other ones because I have been to all of them since, but I did miss that very first one. Um, I'm also an elementary music teacher, which some of you might know. So I unfortunately didn't have any days off to take at that time. So now I make sure to put it on my teaching calendar early in the year so I can make sure I have that time devoted to go to that trade show. <gasps> I love it. I love it so much. It looks so fantastic. That little stippling. I keep trying to like go in closer, but I realize this is so fuzzy. You can't really see. So maybe you can check out that detail. All right, let's stamp this other one. If you're new to my Facebook lives, um, I think you're learning as we go along. I stamp very slowly because I'm bad at talking and chatting and stamping at the same time. So if I wasn't talking, I think that would have taken about three minutes to stamp it. But instead, I think it took me about 15 minutes to stamp it. But I hope you guys like the little chats along the way. And I love reading your questions. Um, Sharon said she hasn't been since Phoenix. So I did go to the last one that was in Anaheim. So Alta News second CHA was the last year in Anaheim. And that's the one that I was at. So maybe we did see each other. Okay, so I'm going to do the same colors, but different color tones for this one. So I am going to use this lightest blue, the sea breeze. So this will be like a more vibrant, darker, saturated flower. And this one will be a little bit lighter. So remember, there's three layers for the petals. So I use the darker three on this guy, and I'm going to use the lighter three here. So hopping in with sea breeze first. And Joy, I agree with you. The texture on the leaf is fabulous. If you want to see these up close, we do have a blog hop on our blog. And you can see the lovely photos of all of the projects from our design team and from the guests. And also on the website, we've got the photos. So if you don't have time to hop around, you can see a whole bunch of them in the little slider on the website. 
And I do still recommend going to the block hop, but there are a lot of stops. I do know there are a lot of stops. So you might want to break it up, check out some today, check out some tomorrow. All right, for this next flower, this one only has two color layers. So I did the first one here. So um, it's definitely going to be lighter. I said I was going to do the first three, but this one's actually the first two. So we'll have a big difference. And I like that variety. Okay, so I'll put this here. And this will be stamped out with turquoise. I almost considered going in with tied, tied blue for this layer because it would give a lot of contrast in this flower itself. But I'm going to start with turquoise. And if I feel like I need to go a little bit darker on this layer to get the look I'm after, then I can always just go back and keep this on my Misty and stamp it one more time. Let's see, do we like, do I wanna stamp a little more? You know what, I'm gonna add a little bit of color right on the inside there with the Tide Blue. I'm telling you, I'm getting inky today. Oh, it's really gonna get inky now. I'm gonna use my finger and Tide Blue is so saturated. I wouldn't be surprised if my finger's blue all night. So get ready for it. I'm gonna just use my finger to apply a little bit of ink right here. Alternatively, you can use one of our fantastic little ink blending tools or one of our new um, ink blending brushes, but I put all my brushes in the other room, so I'm not gonna go grab that now. So finger it is, but the little um, detailed angled blending brushes would be perfect to get in this little area. So here goes, time to get inky. Just going to pat around that center with my finger, just so I can get a little bit of deeper color right there. And let's see how that adds to this. All right, you can see how much depth and dimension we got just by adding that. I think that's good. Maybe I'll just wipe my finger off on the dry chamois. <laughs> and as expected, still inky. All right, Sue. Oh, Sue's active today. Thanks, Sue, for all the comments. Um, I'm seeing a few others. Barbara's waiting for her brushes. And Sue says she is, says use lava bar soap to clean your hands. I'm not familiar with lava bar soap. So I will definitely have to look into that. And Sarah says fingers are the original artistic tool. I agree. Yep, fingers right here. So I think that worked perfectly just to add a little bit more dark color. And to keep things different from our first flower, I'm going to use the darker two shades of orange, the autumn blaze and the fire brick to do my flower center. Okay, making messes as always over here, but I kind of like it. All right, so this is the B1 layer. I'm realizing I haven't been naming the layers or the um, different um Sorry, I think I put that upside down. Nope, it was right the first time. Um, I haven't been naming which number and letter was for each layer. I apologize for that. But it is all on the layering guide. So if you get this set, you can check that out. Okay, so this is going to be Autumn Blaze. And Marianne ordered the brushes. I think you're gonna love them. I really hope you do. It's nice to have a variety of blending tools, especially if you are into um, like layered stenciling because sometimes you get those little tiny areas that you wanna get without grabbing a huge tool and kind of stamping, I mean, um, blending everywhere. So nice to have that variety. And then my last little bit here, this is gonna be the B2. I'm just gonna pop that into position and then ink this up with my fire brick. Gonna be a lot to clean later on, but that's okay. Okay, so two totally different vibes here, but they still coordinate because I was using the same color families for each, just different shades and tones of those colors. And then this one will have the darker leaves. So I'll go in with forest glades and evergreen and I'll be skipping the frayed leaf. And this just fits in perfectly. That's like an, 
it's really an easy layering set, I have to say. Some of them are more complicated than others. I always try to recommend the simple ones because that's a question we get a, a lot, a comment. Um, I know that the layering concept isn't for everybody and some of you have more patience than others when it comes to layering. So if you're one of the less patient people or you have trouble with your eyesight and maybe you are unable to do the more complicated layering sets, I would say this one's a good one to go for, okay? And even when it came to stamping those detail layers, with the stippling, I feel like you have some flexibility there. It's not like precise layering. If I was slightly off on stamping that darkest layer and I kind of like shifted it a little bit, it would still look fantastic just because it kind of has um, a less precise look anyway with the stippled dots. Okay, last but not least here, we are going in with the final layer here for this leaf, adding that same detail, and this is gonna be in the evergreen. And thanks for anybody else who is joining us for today's live, because if you share while I'm still alive, still live, you will have an opportunity to win a $15 gift certificate to the Alta New Store. All right, it's pretty dark. It will dry slightly light, lighter, but this is a nice deep color. I think this is why Tesneem's favorite greens are these three, the Frayed Leaf, Forest Glades, and Evergreen, is because they have such good contrast. Um, so they really kind of make everything look very popped, very punchy. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> punchy and popped. All right, time to cut these guys out. Again, without all of the chatter, this probably would maybe take 10 minutes max, I guess. I don't know. I'm guesstimating here because, you know, I took a long time chatting. If anybody else has questions, um, you could definitely put them in the comments and I'll be happy to answer them. Um, someone said, did I freeze or you? So Gwen, I'm not sure. I'm still getting comments coming through. So maybe it was you who froze. You can always go back and watch the replay of this. So after we're live, you will be able to watch this video once more. Um, you won't be able to enter the gift certificate contest thing at that point, but you can go back and check out anything that you may have missed. So here are our lovely cone flowers. And now I'm just going to grab the die set. Barbara says she's freezing also. Maybe it is me. And if it is me, I apologize. Um, my husband and I actually just upgraded our internet speed. And I was really excited to do that. Of course, it costs more money, but it seemed worth it, especially when I do these lives and other streaming classes and workshops and whatever. So we upgraded it, but what we realized is that we also have to upgrade now, like our, our modem and possibly the router. I'm not really sure he knows more about it than I do, but just upgrading the service is not enough. You still need to upgrade all of your hardware. So we need to take advantage of those speeds. So I'm hoping the next time I do a live video, it will be better. So if I'm the one freezing, I am oh so sorry. And I'm just going to adhere these down with some tiny little bits of, um, painter's tape that I just always have hanging around on my desk. I also have painter's tape that I use when I'm sewing. I don't know if you guys are sewists out there, but I like sewing my own clothes. And I am I used to not be very good at sewing darts, if you know what a dart is. So it's like, if you have a garment um, in the bodice, there'd be shaping around your body because our bodies are usually not straight up and down. They have like some curve and you like, sew these little triangle type things and the fabric comes together and it helps shape the garment. And I used to be really bad at sewing them until, I don't know if this was something I came up with on my own or if I saw it, but I use painter's tape and I put it along where the dart is. And then I just, I keep the fabric pin together, use the painter's tape and then remove the pins as I sew. But I use that as a guide to have like a perfectly straight line. Um, and then I minimize my stitch length. I know we're going so off topic here. I should probably start die cutting. My mind is all over the place today. But anyway, um, you adjust your stitch length as you go to narrower and narrower when you get to the tip of the dart. Remove that tape and it is perfect. So again, this is just a long way of saying I like having painter's tape nearby. So 
all in the craft room, all the different stations of all the different crafts that I do, there is painter's tape everywhere. I'm just gonna trim some of this off and trim it down small enough. Okay, so our mini blossom plate is sized at three by six, which will accommodate mm, lots and lots of dies. Okay, sometimes you just need to trim them down a little bit. Okay, so I'm, let me see, that looks good. All right, I'm gonna run this guy through. <laughs> Someone says off topic makes live in interesting. I'm glad you think so. I'm glad it's interesting and not like, what's Jen rambling about this time? And yeah, Kimberly, I like feeling like you guys are with me. It would be so nice if we could all craft together. I would love that. Come on, how cute. That's perfect. I love it so much. All right, second cone flower gonna go through. Grabbing some more little bits of tape. And then we can assemble this card, give it a sentiment and we'll be good to go. I don't know how some of the other girls who do the live videos get so many <laughs> projects done. I'm always getting one project completed. Okay. Gwen, a group Zoom would be lovely. Um, we do have live workshops. I don't know if, if a lot of people know about these, um, the live crafting workshops. So it's kind of like a hybrid between a Facebook Live, like what we're doing here, and our Alta New Academy classes because you would get the supplies ahead of time. So we always advertise what supplies are needed. We do these all the time. Like there's so many scheduled. Lydia is kind of in charge of setting these up and coming up with the class ideas and she's fantastic. So then we all do get together on, on Zoom and we craft together. So it's like this, but you'll also be doing it along with me or whoever else is teaching that class at that time. Um, so the live workshops are fantastic. I love them. We started them when the pandemic started because a lot of us were kind of feeling the desire and need to connect with others. And, you know, we just couldn't do it at that time. So we thought that that would be a really great way to connect with our customers, have them connect with each other and just do little fun crafty events. And then also there is an Alta New fan page um, on Facebook, like an Alta New fan Facebook group that we don't run, but the girls who do it are amazing. And they also do these, I can't really call it a workshop, but they do, um, I don't know if it's weekly or monthly, but they do little crafty events and they get together on calls and craft together. So you can also check out that Facebook group if you wanted to connect with those or that community. So it's really amazing. There are a lot of things we can do. All right, I'm gonna keep this one simple, clean and simple, you know me. I think that looks super cute. And we're just gonna peel off a sentiment and this will be pretty much done. I am just working on a card panel. I don't typically adhere them to card bases until I'm ready to send them. It's just a lot easier to store the flat card panel. It's also a lot, lot less stress. I'm not worried about messing it up because I can always like rip the elements off and I didn't screw up a whole card base. I just messed up that one panel. A um, few reasons why I like doing that, but then we're just on the card front here. Also for ph photographing it, having it flat and not like popping up every two seconds because it's a folded card base, also easy having it this way. I'm going bold. I'm getting my sentiment on with an acrylic block. I like having the control of the acrylic block when I use smaller stamps like this, but it's a little stressful. I have to be honest, getting it straight. We have our alignment right here, but it's so off camera and I'm not gonna shift everything over, but you could also use the grid and the A2 sized lines, that's what I'm outlining right here, is this is the portrait one, and then this is the landscape. You can't see the whole thing, it's off screen, but that can help you when you're stamping sentiments. But I'm just gonna use the grid right here. And tempted to kind of use not black for my sentiment. I'm gonna go with fire brick, let's do that. Kind of bring in some of those orange tones back over here. 
Avril says, Lydia is doing a workshop the day after my birthday. <gasps> that would be a great birthday present. Yes, she does such amazing workshops. So good, so good. Okay, I gotta take a deep breath here. Keep everything lined up. There we go. It's pretty good. I'd say that straight. And lastly, we'll just adhere our flowers down. So I'm gonna put this one down with the glue tape. That's just our also new glue tape. I love this. I've got these all over the place. Like I'm serious. They're everywhere. Like if someone were to come in this room, like why do you have so many of the same thing out? But it's because my desk gets so messy and I don't want to be wondering where the glue tape is because like pretty much every card I make uses some glue tape. Okay. So let me not push that down yet. I want to make sure I'm like happy. Yeah, I'm going to move this up a little bit. And that'll come down there. Just like that. And lastly, this little guy will go on with some foam tape. Okay. So we are just about ready to call this one finished. I think I got that from Bob Ross. He says that when he's like down to the end of his paintings. Call this one finished. He signs it. Don't worry, I won't sign my card. Now we are just about ready to wrap up. So if you haven't shared and you would like to be included in that drawing for a $15 gift certificate so you can get our lovely build a flower cone flower or anything else that your heart desires from the Alta New Shop, then please share now. It's your warning because <laughs> I don't want to sign off and for you to realize you didn't share it. So it only works while we're live. And just kind of tucking this in. This would be a great one, I think, for some enamel dots. We have some lovely coordinating enamel dots that later on, when I have a chance to give this away, maybe I'll add some enamel dots to that. I really love these colors together. So fabulous. So here is our build a flower cone flower, a nice simple layering set. And if you're part of our subscription, then you've already got this coming to you. And if you'd like to join in, um, I believe the subscription would start with the next one. So it would start with the May. Um, just double check on that. I'm not sure if you place your order on the first, if you get the current one or the next one. So you might need to add this to your cart too, but definitely check it out on the website because it'll give you all of that information that you need. Now let me switch you back over. So I can say goodbye to you properly. All right, so thanks again. Um, I've got a big mess to clean up now. I've got all my stamps to, to clean, got a lot to do, but I was really happy to chat with you guys and even give you some of the backstory on Altenew. Um, Tasneem and I have told this story so many times, but we don't know how, who knows the story and who doesn't. So I enjoy telling it because it's a really nice story, not just about Altenew, but just about friendship in general. So everyone who's on our team has definitely become a dear friend and family member basically to me. And I do like thinking about that all the time, but especially in April because it is our stamp company's anniversary. So that'll do it for me today. And I hope you guys have a wonderful crafty morning, afternoon, evening, whatever it happens to be for you. And thanks to everyone who shared. Um, we'll be popping in in the comments and tagging the winner shortly. So definitely keep an eye out for that. And again, Blog Hop is up and running. We've got prizes and the designers and guests did a really amazing job as usual, as you would expect from them. All right. I will see you guys on another live. Bye.